Okrama Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his latest column titled Irremediable Crisis Pervading Pessimism Without Remedies in Place. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So, Professor, you paint a picture that is very pessimistic. Do you see no bias for hope or of recovery? And how can a crisis be irremediable? You know, optimism is not the same as hope. Optimism is just, well, you know, things look good or something like that. When you have hope, you have hope because there's some basis. As um, some Christians say, you read the signs of the times and then you get a sense that this can be built on. So I do think that we must look for signs of what can be remedied. But I do think there is a crisis with the existing political order. There needs to be a complete shake-up and change. And I don't think it can be remedied with the existing ruling organization, the ANC. And I also don't think the opposition is a suitable uh, alternative. So that some big shake-up is needed. And it doesn't seem likely that there will be such a shake-up before the next elections and we're going to elections and then there'll be another crisis because the ANC probably won't get 50% and so forth and you'll get something like al Jamaa and President and things like that. So the sea is a big mess at the moment in the sense that they've left things so late and it's not clear that they actually do want to make the necessary changes with energy for a start. Where I stay, in two weeks, there have been three water outages. And I feel that this is something which previously only hit people in uh, rural areas or in townships. Now it's hitting middle classes and the very wealthy as well. Although people in those situations have better facilities for dealing with it. You store your bottles of water and things like that for, for the next time there's a cut, because you know there will be a next time. And we're starting to regard it as normal. There was a survey printed in the Daily Maverick of how this is really getting to people, how people, I think... 60% of the people of a, of the middle class or upper middle class want to emigrate and things like that and will not vote for the ANC. So the ANC is in trouble, but the country is in trouble and there's no sense as to how it will be remedied. You also suggest that uh, the erosion of democracy and state institutions is going beyond the present generation and robs young people of their future. Please uh, elaborate, Professor. See, what I think is happening now is that when the first reported case of a young toddler drowning in a pit toilet happened, it was like eight years or so back. So toddlers die at four, and they drown in feces. Now, this is something really shocking. At the same time, they go get a bit old, they go to school, and the schools are now very dangerous places. They're places where people take knives. They're places where teachers get stabbed or shot, where pupils get stabbed or shot in the school grounds or outside the school grounds. The youth, first of all, are highly unemployed. Uh, even if they've got high qualifications, very often they're unemployed and they are in an environment that is not conducive to leading a satisfactory life. As an unemployed person, first of all, it's difficult, but the environment doesn't have recreation facilities, doesn't have parks, grass, things like that, that where I'm staying now, if I were to walk, I'd probably could find nearby to sit on a bench or something like that. You don't have those things. So it makes it possible for young people to drift into gangs and to get killed very young or to be maimed. And um, 
And this continues throughout people's teens into their early 20s. And I think this is what I mean. They're not just robbing the present generation of a decent life. They're robbing a future generation because this future generation may not live, not because they get sick or something like that, but because social conditions are dangerous. Mm. And lastly, Professor, some may not know that you also come from an ANC background. How did things uh, turn out this way? And did you not have a sense that it might happen? Well, I don't want to suggest that everything went wrong when I left. Um, <laughs> but uh, when I was involved, I used to believe that we would not go in the direction of ZANU-PF. Uh, because what I thought is the Zimbabwean struggle was much more militarized than ours. South African struggle had MK, but it also had a long tradition of political debate and political discussion. And you used to see young people. I remember in, in the 1990s, young Africans with these thick books under their arms and debating uh, people like Gramsci and Althusser and all sorts of, uh, but a lot of them, see, take someone like Ina Gordonwana. When he was a unionist, he was writing about very complicated things in South African labor bulletin. So you had debates, people who've now become leaders of the ANC don't write anymore. But in those days, these people used to be part of a big debate which used to happen in branches. It happened, especially before that, in the UDF, happened in exile. You know, there's a book now, Mzala, who used to engender a lot of those debates. But we used to listen to Radio Freedom. And some of the things that were said on Radio Freedom, I really learned a lot from, because you had the sense that this was an organization that was thinking about the future. You have a sense now that it's not thinking about the present or the future. It's just thinking about the money in their bank accounts. And so, you know, I went to a certain person, certain service provider. And as I was going there, someone recognized me. I wasn't sure who he was. And I later heard a certain uh, person came high up in the elections and he bought lots of a certain luxury item at this shop. I went to get my item repaired. He had gone there to get lots of fashion items. I didn't go to the place for fashion items, but these people are living the good life, while others are starving without jobs, etc., etc. And that's what it now means to be in the NC. When I was involved... To be involved in ANC meant you were likely to get a good smack. Like I look at some of these people and I think, that guy has got such smooth skin. He's never had a club from the police. <laughs> See? Now, in, in my time, you knew you had a very good chance of getting a club, landing in a detention cell, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying we must have that over again, but these people have only known the ANC of luxury. And that is the problem. Mm, thank you, Professor. There was researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, in conversation with Polity, discussing his latest column titled Irremediable Crisis, Pervading Pessimism Without Remedies in Place.